Beaming live on a radio rope from a world near you, it's CKNWR Radio Station. Servicing the city of Adobe Skyscraper, the surrounding Adobega County, and if weather permits, even further than that. Join us this week for this evening's show, episode 673, originally aired July 26, 1986, for an exercise in the annual budget fundraiser. electronic gong sound means and if you don't it probably means you're tuning in for the first time and tuning in just in time firstly because the show just started and secondly because it's our very special pledge drive episode and the phone lines are now officially open Uh, but what kind of host doesn't introduce the people wearing headphones on the other side of him You'll have to forgive me, but I haven't had any coffee today. So to my right, of course, is Louis Mastodon, former employee of Adobe Dog Food Company. Hi. And to his right is Charlie Dust, the ex-monorail conductor who probably drove you to skee-ball school when you were a kid. Hi. And across from me, wearing a somewhat garish feathered hat, is Mr. Ray Spielberg, famous for christening the Spielberg Bat. Adieu. And directly in the center of me is myself, John Starbird. I spent all afternoon making my Nana a birthday card and then lost it in a gust of wind. So, hi. I didn't know we were a publicly funded radio show. What do you mean? The donation drive. Ah, uh, well, technically we aren't, or at least if we are, no one's told me about it. And we still have a donation drive? Charlie, I appreciate your confusion, but you have to remember that this show isn't technically funded at all. On paper, we literally have zero assets. Um, I think of it more like begging or panhandling. I like to think of it as passing the hat. And it's quite a large hat indeed this year because we have an ambitious pledge goal, which is actually so large that I feel a bit awkward using the exact figures on the airwaves. Can you at least explain how we plan on using the budget? Of course, of course. As it happens, a full three quarters of what you donate tonight will go towards a brand new Kenningbeck underwater microphone. And that will allow us to capture all the sounds of the aquatic hemisphere. And of course, the remaining assets will go to pay for a giant tank of water in which we'll submerge the mic. So everything we capture from this setup will of course go right back to you, the listener. And when we find out what sounds are under there, underwater, we'll broadcast them on this very show. We should also have some of that budget for a new coffee maker. What's wrong with the one we have? Broke. Wait, the one in the break room? Yep. What happened to it? It got concrete in it. What? Concrete in the coffee maker? Ah, 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 ah. Rich, very good. Ah, I noticed that. It's very upsetting. I haven't had any coffee today. Me either. How very rich. I don't touch this stuff myself, but how wickedly funny. I'm not in a very good mood. Oh, ha! I would really like to meet the sap responsible for that. How very rich! Sorry to barge in, everyone, but there's a delivery for you outside. Ah, it's Susie Ochikubo. Why don't you give us a clap? 
I wasn't butting in, was I? What were you talking about? Concrete in the coffee maker. Ah, very upsetting. It really is. I wonder who did that. Some nitwit, I'd say. I wonder if anyone caught a peek of that sap. Come to think of it, I do remember seeing someone in the kitchen this morning holding a trowel. Wasn't that you, Mr. Spielberg? Me? Yeah, yeah. I saw you as you were walking out and you were holding a bundle of rebar under your arm. Look what's that under his chair, a bag of quick crete. That wasn't a mortar mixer? No, you jackhole. God, what are you mixing concrete for anyway? Well, it was instant stucco, first of all, not concrete. For your information, the railroad commissioner asked me to build a sculpture of a Spielberg bat for her son's graduation present. Well, if you're wondering why we have Ray on the show tonight, it's because he's our most generous donor. Every year during our pledge drive, and despite how angry with him I am right now at this moment, because he fucked up the coffee maker, I guess we're glad to have him manning the phones with us today. To be fair, it does look a lot like a mortar machine. Anyway, sticking to our schedule, the phone lines are open, the operators are standing by, and not that you need incentivizing or anything, but every person who pledges $10 or more will receive a realistic chicken fried steak toy courtesy of Matt Slime Deli. And for donations of $50 or more, the prize is a gift certificate for a complimentary executive touch package at Rainy Planet Car Wash. Oh, I could go for that. My Jeep sure could use an executive touch. Ah, indeed we all could, Susie. Now, our phones have yet to ring, but our very first caller will walk away with not one, but six tickets to see Michael Perfect in concert at the Allergy Park Pavilion in May. So, run to your landline and start pushing buttons now. If you're just joining us, that's the voice of Ray Spielberg, the field scientist responsible for discovering the now famous, now I should say infamous, Spielberg bat. Ray holds dinner parties during every year to raise money for our pledge drive from famous celebrities at his lovely home in Tonga Springs. Last year alone, he pledged 80% of our entire budget, and we're hoping his generosity will rub off on you, our listening audience, who have traditionally been pretty tight with your contributions. Oh, that reminds me. A few 18-wheelers dumped off some really large packages for you at the loading dock. Then bring them on in. I don't think I can handle it myself. It's those mic cables you ordered. Mic cables? Yeah, the ones you requested last year. What? Were they back ordered or something? Not exactly, no. They said there was a delay because the cables got tangled. I don't understand. We ordered those in April or February. That was at least six months ago. Yeah, that's what they that's said just... too. A six-month delay. Apparently, it's not trivial to untangle 10,000 feet of XLR cable. Or wait, they said there were 10 cables, so it was probably more like... 100,000 feet that got tingled. Six months to suss it all out. Seemed pretty good to me, actually. Why don't you go try them out? Maybe take a few laps around the skyscraper and have a chat with your business neighbors. That's a great idea, Mrs. Ochikubo. Louie, Charlie, go hook up a mic down at the loading dock and find some people to interview. Ray and I will just hang back here at the mixing board and we'll take the phone calls. Adieu.
traveling down the waterfall glass elevator right now, down to the lobby with our new cables. We should be able to reach as far as we could ever want. That's right. Let's see who we can find in the lobby. But we need to be extra careful about the excess slack in the elevator shaft. Don't worry. I've brought these caution signs to close the elevator when we get off, so we don't tangle the cables. Go ahead. Put these in the corner. That's the best place for them? No, but it's the place they should go right now. We have to unwind them slowly so they don't get tangled again. Right, but if we put them in this corner, don't you think they will get tangled by the breeze from the door? No, these are heavy duty. Yeah, I just don't want them to blow away. It's windy out there. Yeah, sure. Ah, in the sweet confines of the Adobe Skyscraper Lobby. Do you hear that sweet piano tink along? That's the familiar sound of Tinsley Cliffwalk working as magic hands across the keys. Those hands really do look like magic. I heard a rumor he was involved in some pretty serious advertising with those hands. Well, I heard the same thing. It was a tennis ball commercial. His hands were filmed opening tennis ball canisters until you could see blisters begin to form on the thumb. That's when he decided to get out of the ad business, I suppose. Hey, fellas. You know, we got some rules about tangles in the lobby. I see you're broadcasting with those cables, but, you know, we had a guy in here about six months ago. He got in a big mess with some XLR cables that took a lot of time to untangle, and it looks a lot like those. Really? We might know something about that. Yeah, he had what looked like miles of cable. And then he tripped over the couch, and he couldn't find one end from the other, and then it was a real disaster. So, I decided we need some anti-tangling rules down in the lobby. Well, are we breaking those rules? No, no. Well, no. But this does seem like a time when you want to prevent any tangling. So I suggest put the excess cable under the piano over there, give a clear and distinguishable path of cable, and then, you know, these caution signs here, they're not going to stop anybody from getting on the elevator. You know that, right? Why is that? Well, people around here have been real clumsy lately. I mean, real clumsy. They don't read signs. They don't follow the rules. And I saw one guy walk straight out of here holding a top terrace sign, and he didn't think about it. Those guys are just taking what they see. The general passerby needs that sign, but no, it's not there anymore. So I've been watching things extra close. Tell you what, I'll step in the elevator, I'll make sure nobody moves your sign, and you go ahead and finish your show, okay? All right, thanks, couch man. We're gonna go say hello to Tinsley. Hold on to this part here, Charlie, that's it. Let the slack out slowly, very slowly. Tinsley, don't stop playing. But we're going to store this extra cable under your piano for a while, until our broadcast is over. Hey now, there's all sorts of stuff down there already. Just toss it under. I can play while we talk, you know. How about a close-up of my hands while you're looking this way? Well, Tinsley, this is just a radio broadcast, you know that. We've had you on the show before. You don't. We don't have a camera at all, uh, but if you want to keep playing, that's just fine. Uh, we were just talking about your previous career in the advertising industry. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, sure. I ran lots of ads in my youth, back before I started my nail salon. My favorite ads were the ones where they would start with a great, big close-up of my hand. It was for some kind of lotion. I don't know. I never actually used the products I advertised, but they had some special camera that see how healthy my skin cells were. You look real close and see my skin moving around as the camera panned out. You eventually would see this was not some primordial soup, but that was a beautiful hand just connected to a mediocre wrist. It was a real lovely commercial. Well, I'd say that was my favorite job I ever did. So, what kinds of lotion do you use to keep your hands so magical? I don't use any lotion. Well, not anymore, you see. I used to have a bottle of Instant's Cool, Cool Ball, but I stopped using that when I recovered from my tennis ball fiasco. Have I told you about that? No, please do. Well, I was still very much into the ad business. I was getting lots of jobs from all over the country, traveling from here and there and all over. And then I got a call from... <gasps> Dang, gosh 
darn and golly, Whoa. what kind hey, of Zazu. fool is running around with a 70 ounce Slurpee? Calm down. I can't calm down now. Somebody threw a Slurpee in my elevator. Zazu, uh, we're broadcasting here and you're, you're obviously upset. But do you mind telling the audience what you uh, what you you do here at the skyscraper? Gosh, dang it! Golly, there's red all over. Ah, it's gonna take weeks to get this cleaned up. Yeah, I'll speak to the audience. No one use the elevator. So you heard it here, everybody. The elevator is out of commission, out of order, and out of quarters right now. Do not use the elevators. Hey guys, the sign's still there in the elevator, but I don't think they're working. There's like a red gooey slime covering all the buttons. You guys might want to take the stairs and see if you can find the other end of your cable. Because I'd hate to see another tangle like we had six months ago. Yeah. Don't use the elevator. I gotta clean it out. I'll bet that slurpy dude jerk is still around here somewhere. Hey! You two! Go find Rick. He's in the stairwell somewhere. He'll get rid of that slurpy scourge. Gah! <clears throat> Attention, Adobe Skyscraper residents, attendants, visitors, senators, employees, and everyone else. There has been a slurpage of the elevator. There has been a slurpage of the elevator. Please use the stairs until this problem is cleaned up. movements by means of the stairwells. Be stairwell!
You know, it's kind of strange having to take the stairs after doing the elevator trips for so long. Yeah, I forgot they built these stairs back when they built the first Adobe skyscraper. Well, yeah, the stairs were initially the whole backbone of the project. Taking them up and down is nostalgic, but quite a lot of work. How high do you think Rick is right now, anyways? What floor is he on? I imagine he would have some more clever way to get up to the 50th floor, if that's where he is. This, uh... This, here's the 22nd floor. He's mostly within the next 28 floors. Say, do you remember that video game they used to have in the lobby? Rick Reception? It was about him. What a crazy game. Do you remember that? Rick Reception the game? Yeah, it was like a video game. It was an arcade game. I, I used to play it. You, you try to get through this building as a hooligan or a street kid, and then Rick Reception chases you out, and if he catches you, I think you lose the game. Sort of like ping pong. Yeah, it's like 3D ping pong. I think I see Rick right ahead of us. We can let him know about the problem in the lobby. It looks like he's helping somebody, though. Hey, Rick. We really need to let you know about this problem in the lobby. It involves the elevator. Oh, hey, I appreciate you guys. Of course, I want to help you guys. Ted! But right now, I gotta help Mr. Bellevue here down the stairs. One hundred! Ten thousand! One! 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 He's got a very significant disorder which causes him to count 
in exponential ways. Now, I'm sorry to have to shout, gentlemen, but I figured if I walk down these stairs, three up and two down, I might just make it. If he takes too many steps and starts counting them in a row, his mind get locked up like a computer on super slow mode. Anyway, I gotta help this guy down the stairs. Hey, man, start over, man. It's okay. Just start over. I haven't been this stuck since the 32nd floor was the top floor. Hey, is that where we are? That's where Killer Whale Extermination LLC is located. Let's go see if Ed Del Santo is there. Uh, oh, hold on. Are you just gonna leave me here? Uh, hey, guys. Up here in the control room, your signal is getting a little difficult to understand. So... I think you might want to connect another 1,000-foot XLR cable, try and help clean up the broadcast a little bit. Roger that, John. Just take this short break. Hey, are you guys just going to leave me here? How am I going to get down? I, I can't take the stairs. Don't worry. I'll get this guy down. Okay, well, thanks for that. Go ahead and go to the lobby once you're done helping with that. There's a problem down there. Yeah. There's some slurpy problems in the elevator. That's why you're having to take the stairs, by the way. Slurpy problems. Everything is better on the 32nd floor. All your little hassles, they don't bother you no more. People say this crazy world is going to the rats. But I don't think that. Life is always peachy on the 32nd floor. Toes are never wrinkled and your life is never boring People say the stupid world is gonna go to pot But I think it's not You are my favorite You drive me crazy You are my favorite And it's right up here in the sky Everything is perfect on the 32nd floor Everyone who sees you's gotta walk up to your door People say this crazy world that doesn't make no sense You are my favorite You drive me crazy You are my favorite And it's right up here in the sky I had the most amazing dream last night space to hide but I forgot to bring the oxygen so we both die hey don't worry that's not where it ends somehow we both pulled through we woke up sleeping on the sofa there floor number 32 you are my favorite you drive me crazy On the 32nd floor Yes, that's where you live now I'm not lonely anymore People say I'm happier whenever I'm with you I guess I'd say that's true
I believe Killer Whale Extermination, LLC, reside here. Let's say hi to Ed. He's the main honcho there these days. I've got some personal business to attend to concerning him anyways. That is why we always emphasize safety, especially when it comes to matters like which end of the harpoon one should load. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Now, Justin, be a good boy and escort Kirby to the 13th floor infirmary. Inform them that the wound originated from a harpoon laced with coagulating agent along with epinephrine and mood stabilizers. So I take it accidents, both on land or on sea, are just par for the course in your line of work, Ed? Oh, I didn't see a sneak in. How you doing, Charlie? Hi. No, I wouldn't say it's in par for my line of work, you see. It's just this damn collaboration I'm a part of with the middle school. Reasons unbeknownst to me, sixth graders can choose a semester with me in low biology class. All fine and good, I love raising up a generation in the art and ways of pooling. Problem is, though, the grade structure is organized by the amount of blubber brought back into the classroom. Now, I don't know why a middle school needs all that blubber, but they sure as hell are eager for it. Anyway, once the uh, kids collect the quarter for an A, they're out of my hair, and every dad got one of them just starts racing around, ignoring basic safety and whatnot, just so they can basically spend the rest of the semester playing board games or... Hell, I don't know what they do when they aren't pulling. Now, I believe the fashionable thing to do these days, correct me if I'm wrong, at least with the middle school children, is to embody all of those aspects of demon babies. Listlessness, hanging about, nearlessness, nearly anything to get out of doing anything. I, I, I've seen my fair share of demon babes come and go throughout my season on the sea. Nothing pains me more than watching a middle schooler stare into the pure evil eyes of a whale gone bad, and then fail to pull the trigger on the poon out of boredom. Why, back in 86, I was on a hunt and something like that happened. The whale was egging the gal to shoot it, practically begging. Now, I rarely speak out of the sailor side of my mouth and children are present, but my, what a tongue lashing I gave her when she failed to take the shot. The whale chewed through half the stern and forced us to ground on the rock of Ibe. Oh, but enough of that. What brings you here at this time of day? Oh, we're just testing these really long XLR cables out, and I thought I would inquire about that whalebone walking stick I commissioned a few months back. Figured we could kill two whales with one poon, so to speak. Oh, yes, yes. Well, you see, I've had simply the hardest time exercising whalebone. Now, as you know, what I do is more than just sport. I provide a service. And something about those floods turned so, so many normally peaceful whales into something more sinister. Something evil. Something inside them snaps. I'm the founder of our company, Jackie Cheshire. Way back when, he knew something had to be done. And I'm honored to follow in his footsteps. So, these whales, these killer whales, at least the ones that we kill, are evil whales, poisoned by killing. And it appears from my many attempts thus far that the evil leeches into their very bones. And anything as much as a bobby pin made from these bones is doomed and cursed. Why, the last one I fashioned, well, you know that boy is scarching the wounded one out. Well, I can't be for certain, but I believe the stick gave him that glass eye. You mean to tell us that you hit that child with a walking stick? Such force that you popped his eye out right out of his skull? That's pretty dreadful, Ed. I don't believe that happened. At least I don't remember it happening like that. All I know is that the boy had both eyes before I crafted that walking stick. And what happened between then and now is best considered cursed time. Let's not get too carried away with oceanic superstitions. The stick is not ready, Charlie. No, not ready for someone with as sweet a soul as you. Perhaps we should put a timeline on it. I'll, I'll give you one more month to craft a stick. Exercise all the evil you need, but just get me that stick. Calm down, Charlie. I, I'm sure Mr. Del Santo has your best interest at heart. These things take time. That there is the truth. But 
As they say, the time it takes is worth the time to make it, yeah. Catch my drift. Adobe Skyscraper, the elevators are in working order again. Please feel free to use the elevators. In addendum, Ralph Norris of Business Game Plan Lineup Solutions, you are officially no longer of Business Game Plan Lineup Solutions. Please pack up your spreadsheets and uniform and have a well day and days. That is all. Bummer. That's great news, though. About Ralph Norris? No, about the elevator. Now we can take this show up to the very top, past the neutron roller. I think Ralph had it coming. I, I heard he cleated someone on a conference call. Here, let's head up there. Heck, we, we might even catch some rays on the roof. We will. They will catch us. That's why. Okay. Now that we're in the elevator and headed up to the Adobe Skyscraper's top floor, you can see around us that the lower levels are getting further away, and the upper levels are coming closer. Closer, Here, further. Four 74, and we step into the light. Oh no, we have to go through one more door. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Solar Jail, our very own tanning salon, 74 stories up. Let's go inside. I'm Brent Coe, and I opened this Terran Parlor 13 years ago. Oh, we're just doing a radio broadcast, but it is a nice rooftop. You're the owner, right? You betcha, and pleased to meet you. I'm Brent Coe, and I opened this Terran Parlor 13 years ago, and we still offer the closest tan to the sun in all the county. Go ahead and feel free to dip your toes in the rain barrels over there. Now, be careful where you step. There are metal conduits that are white as hot snakes. They'll bite you. No charge. So this is the famous solar jail. In case you need a good tanning, it's free to get in, but the exit charge is $15 plus... Oh, hang on now, son. You said you were doing a broadcast, yeah? 
That's right, we've got these new cables. Our studio is many floors down. Radio? Uh, radio waves. Okay, well, be careful not to get these mics in the full sunlight exposure. I don't really want to give away free samples over the radio, understand? <laughs> That's right, come on up, folks. Experience it firsthand. Real fine sun. So, you opened this place in hopes of tanning the population? Well, no, not quite like that, see? I see it as a money maker. Since I'm the only employee and the sun is still free, to me, my overhead's quite low, you understand? And yet you are so high in the air. Excuse me, can you spot me $25? I made a terrible mistake. Sorry? Ooh, wrong, and I can't afford to quit yet. I don't want to stay all day until the night. Why would you have to do that? Why to work off my stolen sunshine? Look. You can help the kid out if you want, but he knows what he got himself into. You may as well just start sweeping the gravel off the towels. And put those suntan oils over there on the shelf. Put them in order of SPF rating first, then color, then odor. Okay. I fell asleep again. I can't believe it. Hey, we need to wrap up the broadcast soon. The janitor's here and he says he needs to vacuum and he wants to know where those cables are going to be stored. You might notice that... We've just communicated with the home base, and our broadcast will be ending soon. Ending on time, I might add. And just remember, the last hour or so has been transmitted over feet and feet of cable down and up. Spare me a five. And uh, then we went... Uh, right back to the beginning. We went up and then down again. These cables are exquisite and quite lengthy. Spare me a five. It's hilariously long. We're leaving, Brent. It was good to meet you, and best of luck. And I thank you for your patronage. Let's see, that'll come out to see two people with a uh, tax. And that's uh, oh, that'll come out to thirty dollars for the both of you. Okay. Spare me a five. No, none here. Thanks. Well, until next time. Keep your kongs up. Well tanned. Goodbye.